Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to take apart this Nissan Leaf electric drivetrain. This is from a 2013 car, and this is the EM57 electric motor, so it's the second generation. But what I want to do is just get the motor out of this whole thing, so we're going to uh, just go ahead and take this whole thing apart. So just to start with on this entire assembly, uh, starting from the top and working our way down, uh, basically under the cover here uh, is the charger and some other bits. In this middle layer here, this is actually the inverter. So this takes our DC battery power, converts it to three phase AC power to run the motor. The motor is this section right here. And then to the side of that, we've got the gearbox. Uh, most electric cars do not have transmissions. They typically have a single speed gear reduction, very simple. And this does still have the mounts on it. So I'm gonna take those off as well. So I think the very first thing I'm gonna do is take off these cover bolts. These are 10 millimeter, and you can't get at any of the other bolts until this cover is removed. And since we're just taking them out, let's do it a little faster. Now, don't expect this to just pop off because there's going to be a gasket under here. I can see there's a cooling layer for the liquid cooling. So I'm probably gonna have to just real gently pry all the way around this. So you just gotta get in there and pry real gentle. Don't over pry, because this is just aluminum, and if you do it wrong, you can actually snap a little piece of aluminum off there. So slow and gentle. Looks like there are also some alignment pins in here. Might have to be a little careful of. So here's the seal is broken. I just have to work around it a little bit here. There we go, that should be it. Da, 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 da. There's the underside of our lid right there. Okay, let's take a look inside here now. Uh, so overall, we've got the charger. Uh, we've got some fuses. I'm seeing some relays over here. So basically it's uh, the charger, it's also the junction box, um, I'm guessing the pre-charge relays. Um, it's kind of where everything all comes together. So actually, one thing that's kind of nice since I got this as a unit, I got the J1772 power inlet right here. And if I just follow the orange cord up right here, those little two small uh, power wires, that's our power in from uh, the wall power to the charger. Uh, they're thin wires, so you know it's relatively low current. This was like a 3.3 kilowatt uh, charger in here. Now on the other hand, here we got some nice big wires. And if we follow those down, those nice big hefty things would have gone to the battery pack. So right here, this is uh, our main input for the batteries. So I'm looking at the charger and I'm trying to decide what actually holds it in place. And it looks like if we come down lower, uh, there's a number of bolts going up into it. Uh, so I'll take those off. But besides that, uh, we've got all these cables all over. But you know what, some of them are loose. So like our, our cable going to the J1772, no reason I have to disconnect that, although like it's zip tied down here. So I think the orange cables, maybe I just leave for now, um, but I'll start tearing off some other just unnecessary items here. And then the other big thing is that there is a black wire harness and it connects uh, up into the charger here. It connects down to 
uh, the motor. So I'm gonna have to go around and take all that off. Now, just another thing while I'm thinking of it, uh, I bought this entire driveline assembly from a salvage yard, but it was considered three pieces. Uh, at the junkyard, it was considered a 2013 Leaf engine, which is funny because it's a motor, not an engine. The 2013 Leaf DC converter inverter, and the 2013 Leaf transmission, which of course it's not a true transmission, it's just a gear reduction and differential. But sometimes you have to remember if you're trying to find parts at a junkyard, just knowing what they actually call them there can be kind of important. So I'm just removing any of the uh, zip ties, anything like that, get all these cables disconnected here. There's also a number of these clips where you have to just push in with a screwdriver and then it should be able to slide up off the clip, unless it's corroded. So right back here, this and this are our two kind of weird connectors on the black wire harness. So we have to take the cover off here. And then underneath it's going to be kind of like a big sort of a lever. That pulls out. And then this one is just a twist lock. And with those, whole wire harness should come off now. So here's the entire black wire harness pulled off. I just read the tag on the outside of the charger here. What's interesting about this, it's marked as a box assembly power converter. Input is single phase or split phase, 100 to 240 volts AC at 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, this is the 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So this is from a 2013 car and it was not the stripped down S version. The output 360 volts nominal and 14 volt. Uh, so this will charge the 12 volt car battery as well as the, the main propulsion battery pack. So at this point, I've got the black wire harness off of there. I do still have the orange high voltage battery cables on here. Uh, but they're all loose on the end, so I don't see why I have to take them off up here at the charger. I can just take this whole thing off. There's still a couple of just random brackets, and I, I think I'll take those off right now. So from the junkyard, they say, hey, we already drained this thing but um, I just don't wanna make a mess here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this liquid cooling hose from down at the motor. I'm just figuring that because that's the lowest point. So if there is a bunch of fluid in there, um, hopefully it'll all drain out right here and then I can disconnect higher up at the charger and the inverter, that sort of thing. Nah, it looks like it's pretty well drained probably just when it spilled all over my car when I brought it home. So I'm going to disconnect the coolant hose between the charger and the inverter. Woo! <laughs> okay, so that's got a little coolant left in it. So now with all the cables and hoses and everything disconnected, uh, we're getting close to being able to take off the charger. If we look up under here, we can see um, the bolts that go up and hold it on. But first, there's one more thing to do. Um, if we look at the top here, we can see uh, these two connections straight down in there. Uh, they kind of go down into a shaft. So those bus bars come out, they turn, they go down pretty deep. So let's see where those go, because among other things, uh, there's still an electrical connection between the charger and the inverter, because that whole charger, it's also a junction box. So if we look down here, 
we see this. And what we'll do is we'll pull out those two screws and then pull that black block straight out. 10 millimeter bolts. And now all we have to do is that pull that straight back, straight out. You can see it's gasketed uh, because that's the electrical connection there between the charger down to the inverter. So we'll have to get in there, pull those bolts out. So these are 13 millimeter. And I don't want to drop these because I don't know how far down this goes. And that's our electrical connection. So now I can start working on these 13 millimeter bolts that go up and hold the charger on. We have the bolts out that hold the charger on, but it looks like there's also some uh, pins, some alignment pins under there. So I'm gonna try to gently pry it up and just try to do it kind of nice and straight and gentle as best I can here. Yeah, over on this side here, there's an alignment pin. And of course, that's make sure you get those uh, connections down to the inverter, right? And the other part is to try to lift this straight up so we don't monkey up any of those connections right there. Okay, let's come on in for our top view. Here's the inverter. It's totally flat on top except where our power comes into it. Uh, there's also these two alignment pins. So when putting the charger back on top, obviously those have to be lined up along with the power. Uh, the inverter doesn't actually look that big. I mean, if we just kind of look at it from the side here, you go, oh, it's about maybe four and a quarter inches tall. But if you look closer, it actually kind of bulges down into the space of the motor. So it takes up more space than you think it would. Um, it also overhangs the front of the motor just a little bit, kind of into the, uh, the gearbox area. And then on the opposite side, uh, all of this here is the inverter, and you can see how it kind of tucks down almost around the side of the motor a little bit. Uh, the whole thing looks fairly straightforward to take off, though. We've got uh, just a couple of bolts. Uh, looks like six, maybe seven in total. I gotta pull those out. Now the other thing to remember is of course we had to disconnect the positive and negative from the power coming in from the charger junction box. That power goes into the inverter that's inverted to three phase AC power to run the motor. So somewhere in here there should be three connections going right down to the motor and where we're gonna find those is behind this little secret plate right here. That's going to take a special bit to get that out. So I think I'll start just by loosening these guys up and then we'll get in here and disconnect that. These are 13 millimeter. So now this cover between the inverter and the motor, uh, we've got some safety screws. You need a special bit for those. That's a Torx T30 security bit. So it's kind of that six-sided star bit, but it has the hole in the middle. These things are great. Um, usually you can buy them as a set of different sizes. Everybody should own these. Uh, these are the bits you need for avoiding warranties. They're the best ones out there. So these are the three phase connections to the motor. Uh, those are going to be uh, 13 millimeter again. So again, in theory, the inverter should just lift right off uh, with the exception of uh, any kind of alignment pins. And I can see it looks like there is one over here. Otherwise, if I just kind of wiggle this around, it feels pretty loose on the other side, feels pretty loose over here. 
So I'm gonna just try giving it a little gentle prying over here, see if we can loosen that pin. And in the far back corner, there's also a pin here as well. So from where our power connections are, if we rotate 90 degrees this direction, there's an alignment pin back here, which you can actually see. And then there's one going down in here, which you cannot, that one is hidden. So close. The pins are just sticking a little bit. The other thing you can see is that for the three phase wires, uh, the connections from the inverter are kind of pinched between two plates. So that's gonna be pretty snug right there too. Uh, this whole thing has to go up and down nice and vertical to make and break these connections. There we go. Well, our project is definitely getting smaller. Um, I still haven't taken the motor mounts off yet. I figured that kind of made the whole thing easier to handle. Um, I'm probably gonna pop this cover back in just so uh, helps keep dirt and everything out of there and I don't lose it. Um, but I think it's time to take off the transmission. And so if we spin this around, uh, we've still got a motor mount on this end, but it's a number of bolts that connect the, the gearbox and differential to the electric motor. So I'll see about taking those off now. So again, just a bit of an overview here. Uh, what happens is the motor spins, it goes to some gear reduction, that comes down to here to the differential, which splits the power and sends it out to the two front wheels of the Nissan Leaf. Um, I've got these mounts on here. There's also a bracket that it looks like um, supports the one half shaft coming off of here. Uh, the other one you can see really easy on this end. Here's just one view of the differential. It came from the salvage yard with a plug right in here and that keeps uh, junk from getting in there. Uh, the splined shaft, uh, the half shaft for one of the front wheels would go right up into here. I think I am going to take off the motor mounts. They're not really doing any good anymore, so I'll just remove them, get them out of the way. Uh, this is a 18 millimeter socket. Now over on the gearbox side, we have a bracket. Looks like it was used to support the half shaft to the one side. I'm gonna take that off. 16 millimeter socket. So we've got bolts around here that hold the motor onto the transmission. There's also two more over here. So I'm gonna loosen those up. Now the next thing I gotta do here really is just make sure there's uh, nothing else connecting these. Um, I've never, removed one of these before, so all I'm doing is just looking for bolts. This higher part is a separate piece, but it is connected to the motor with a couple of bolts back here that we can't get at without first removing this. Uh, I do see one more bolt at the top, and I didn't see any on the bottom. No, it looks like I got all those, but it looks like just one more on the top here. Okay, I think that's it, but keep in mind the shaft of the electric motor is gonna be going right into some gearing here. So I need to slide this straight off. Uh, that's assuming I got all the bolts. So I'm just gonna do a little gentle prying, see if it moves any. Sure enough, we got some movement, it's loose. So I'll just need to make sure to get this off kind of as nice and straight as I can. There's gonna be some alignment pins in there.
And I can see the motor shaft inside. Oh, here we go. There's our so-called transmission. Single speed gear reduction. So there's our electric motor. Um, always amazing how clean these things are. There's just a little bit of grease on there that was used to slide it in, connect it to the gearbox. And that was about it. I can wipe that off. And then I can spin this by hand. Spins nicely. I can feel that it's a permanent magnet motor. I can kind of feel it snap into place where the permanent magnets are. Pretty cool little motor. Here we have the motor all by itself. Uh, frankly, it's not that big. Uh, measuring across here, it's about 12 inches. Mm, about 12 and a half inches high. Of course, this is just a bracket. It's actually skinnier in the middle. And it's about uh, a foot long. Uh, the shaft itself here is about two and a quarter inches. You know, roughly a two inch shaft there. Now one more thing we might want to take a look at while we were at it is this right here is a removable cover. So let's uh, remove it, take a look inside. On the back end of the motor we've got these little screws here. Those are eight millimeter. So we'll take those out. There are six regular eight millimeter hex head screws. And for that last screw, we need that Torx T30 security bit. So uh, Torx bit with the hole in the middle, which will take care of that screw right there. So what we have here is the resolver. Uh, with an AC motor, you want to be able to tell the position of the rotating shaft. It lets you know uh, speed, direction, all sorts of great information like that. So uh, these little coils here are a sensor. They send information out here, and then this jack on the side, uh, when we disconnected the wiring harness, this was one of the connections uh, that went up and communicates to the rest of the car um, about the position, uh, the rotation of the electric motor. So essentially, here's the motor. Uh, when we look at it from the side, we can kind of see three castings, uh, the far end, this middle section, and then right here there's a seam including this upper part and any motor that I've ever worked on essentially there is a middle part and then the two end caps uh, have the bearings that support that support the shaft so even though I would kind of like to get rid of this piece here I don't think I can do that because if I pull this off um, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing supporting the bearing that's in here that uh, supports the end of the shaft uh, potentially uh, depending on how much a person wanted to modify this this is just aluminum. It could be cut off. That is a thing that could be done. Um, but that's about it. It looks like a, a good motor. Um, just have to connect it to an inverter, uh, some nice high voltage DC, uh, connect up some cooling hoses here, and it should be good to go. Uh, the other thing I will say about this motor is it is not light. Um, I can almost, but not quite pick it up. I mean, I can, can certainly move it around, but Oh my goodness, oh, that's a, that's a backbreaker. Uh, much better to use a hoist or a two-man lift. Uh, two guys uh, could definitely carry that around. So here's the tractor I've been working on, and let's just see how close this motor gets. Uh, the box is approximately the right height. So if we pull it up here, Pretty darn close. The uh, motor is maybe half an inch too high. Um, this is pretty much where the motor would go. You can see this big flange on the front prevents it from going all the way to the transmission. There'll definitely need to be some sort of spacer, uh, probably a, a bearing, and then 
some sort of uh, way to attach the flywheel to that entire assembly because the flywheel's got to fit into the bell housing here. But it looks like I don't see why it shouldn't work. And this is just a total mock-up, but you can see the drive shaft there. And then in the transmission, there is the driven shaft. And they line up pretty close just as it is right now with the sitting on a box. Um, but of course, what I really need is for uh, the flywheel to be right here uh, to engage with the clutch. Pretty close, but it'll definitely need a little machining and a fancy adapter here. The other bit of a challenge in converting this tractor to electric is that originally the engine, which we still see sitting right over here, uh, was the structural member which connected uh, the entire main section of the tractor here up to the front axle and the wheels. So that's going to have to be replaced with some sort of a structure, some sort of uh, a fabricated steel cage probably. And it looks like if I use the Nissan Leaf motor here, uh, it's narrow enough that I still have these nice heavy duty bolts and space around this outside edge that I'll be able to build that cage, that support to go to the front axle. So that's it for today. As always, I hope you enjoy these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos with your friends. Check out 300mpg.org. We've got a lot of great uh, blog entries over there and about 700 videos on this YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, please just take a look at the channel, browse through some of the videos on here. We've got a lot of great playlists as well. Uh, we are on Patreon. It's a lot of time and effort to make videos like these. Uh, so if you could throw a little something our way in terms of support, uh, it is very, very greatly appreciated. And until next time, stay charged up.